When conducting an internal investigation, there are various employment aspects that employers need to be mindful of in dealing with the person that's brought the complaint that's warranting the internal investigation. That's a whistleblower for these purposes. The uh, witnesses who will be taking part in the investigation and uh, finally the accused as well. Now dealing it with each of these in turn, uh, in terms of the whistleblowing employee, well a whistleblower has a statutory definition. Uh, that's an employee who uses reasonable means to bring to their employer's attention concerns connected with their work that they reasonably believe are harmful or potentially harmful. Um, and uh, they are protected under the Employment Rights Act 1996. Now, if an employer suffers dismissal or detrimental treatment as a result of whistleblowing, they may have a claim. Now, such a complaint is contingent on the employee having raised the complaint with the employer about legal wrongdoing. Those concerns uh, need not be in writing. Also, claims under the Act need to be uh, are only open to employees, not, not uh, workers as well. Now, where an employer treats an employee detrimentally in response to a complaint, then they may be in a position to resign and claim constraints dismissal depending on the circumstances. The constructive dismissal case may be automatically unfair if the reasons for the employer's repudiatory breach are essentially on whistleblowing grounds. There's no need for that two-year service requirement. So that's whistleblowing. Um, then you have to move on and have a look also at uh, the um, accused, uh, aware wrongdoing is suspected of a particular employee, you should consider suspending them. Doing so may help safeguard your evidence. Suspension, of course, is an entirely neutral sanction. It's important, though, because of that, to ensure that you pay them in full to avoid both any inadvertent, uh, inadvertent breach of contract or suggestion that punitive measures are being applied against the employee, effectively prejudging the situation before the investigation has taken place. Now, the period of suspension, according to the ACAS code, ought to be no longer than is reasonably necessary to conduct the investigation. The employee should be notified of their uh, suspension also uh, and uh, in terms of it in writing. Uh, and then finally, looking at witnesses. Uh, you need to identify as an employer the appropriate witnesses to take part in the investigation. Uh, the uh, witnesses should be told uh, communication is key, that uh, the uh, investigation process uh, is entirely confidential and they shouldn't be talking to anyone about it, about the, their involvement or the subject matter. This again is to ensure that the evidence is preserved and the investigation process is not compromised in any way. What about witnesses though that are reluctant to cooperate with the investigation? Well, uh, that could be um, regarded by you, the employer, as disobedience of a lawful instruction where there has, when an investigation is taking place, there being uh, there an obstruction to, to uh, justice taking place effectively. So uh, in that case, you may look at a need to be looking at disciplinary sanctions, but that's not the route you want to go down. You don't want an unwilling witness. So it's better to try and deal with that witness and trying to address their concerns. And if you follow that practical HR support advice, then that should really help facilitate a smooth investigation from an employment law perspective and avoid uh, the traps, bear pits for the unwary employer that might end you up in tribunal.